in the today's class we'll discuss about the scattering of light okay so basically when light travels from one medium to another medium or when it passes through a medium it interacts with the particles of the medium and due to the interaction the light rays they get scattered they change their direction that is called as scattering of light so consider a light ray which is passing through a medium then it strikes the particles present in the medium due to this some of the rays gets absorbed so some of the light rays may be get absorbed by the particles when the energy gap of that molecule or particles is equal to the energy of the light ray and some light rays get scattered in all directions they can get scattered they change their direction so this phenomena is called as scattering of light okay so basically scattering of light is the phenomena in which the light rays change their direction due to the interaction with the particles present in the medium that is called as scattering of light when scattering takes place the intensity of scattered light depends on the size of the particles and also it depends on wavelength of light so incident light ray changes its direction that is because of the scattering the scattered light after the scattering the intensity of that scattered light depends on the size of the particle okay so interaction with the photon and the particle takes place because of the interaction the intensity the wavelength of the scattered scattered light may change and intensity of the light depends on size of the particle and also it depends on wavelength of light lambda okay so just you remember the intensity of scattered light depends on the size of the particle so there are two types of scattering coherent scattering and incoherent scattering so scattering of light can be coherent type or incoherent type what are these types of scattering we will see one by one basically coherent scattering of light is the phenomena in which wavelength of scattered light is the same as wavelength of the incident light in coherent scattering the wavelength of the light will not change because of the scattering so after the scattering also the wavelength of light is going to be same as that of the incident light wavelength is not going to change such scattering phenomena is called as coherent scattering the examples for coherent scattering are tyndall scattering relay scattering they are the good example for coherent scattering in which the wavelength of incident light is the same as wavelength of scattered light on the other hand incoherent scattering of light it is the phenomena in which scattered light contains the wavelengths other than the wavelengths of the incident light that means after scattering the wavelength of light is going to change the incident wavelength is having certain uh, range of wavelength or fixed wavelength is observed then after scattering you can observe the different wavelengths other than the incident wavelength such scattering is called as incoherent scattering okay the example for incoherent scattering is famous raman effect or raman scattering in raman scattering the scattered light contains the wavelengths other than incident light okay so these are two types let us consider the explanation about the coherent scattering first in case of relay scattering the intensity of scattered light is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength so such scattering is called as relay scattering in which the intensity of scattered light is directly proportional to 1 divided by lambda to the power 4 so lower the wavelength higher will be the intensity of scattered light so if the light of lower wavelength incident on a particle then scattered light will be more intense okay so if you take the example of higher wavelength then intensity of scattered light 
will be lesser. So basically, the intensity of scattered light is inversely proportional to fourth power of the wavelength. That is well observed in relay scattering. Okay, you remember I is directly proportional to one by lambda to the power four. So intensity depends on the wavelength. So this type of scattering, which obeys this particular statement, is called as Rayleigh law of scattering. Okay, so this particular dependency of intensity of scatter light with the wavelength is called as Rayleigh's law of scattering. And another point about the intensity of light is that intensity is also proportional to square of the volume of the particle. Already I have told you the intensity of scattered light depends on size of the particle and it is observed that intensity is directly proportional to square of the volume of the particle. Okay, V square, it depends on volume square. So example for this uh, relay scattering is the observation of the blue color of the sky. So blue color of the sky is due to the scattering, greater scattering of short wavelength by the dust suspensions present in the atmosphere or by the air molecules. Okay, so you know that the intensity of scattered light is inversely proportional to lambda to the power four. So that means the light of lower wavelength are scattered more. Okay, so intensity of scattered light is observed to be more for lower wavelength. So if you compare the visible region spectrum, starting from violet to red, red light has higher wavelength, whereas blue light is having lower wavelength compared to red. That's why blue light is scattered more. So it will be scattered in all different directions. Okay, so direction of blue color is scattered everywhere. That is the reason why the color of this sky looks blue. Remember, blue color of the sky is due to the greater scattering of blue light. And that blue light is having shorter wavelength. That's why that shorter wavelength light is going to be scattered more due to the dust and air molecules present in the atmosphere that leads to the blue color of the sky. So blue color of the sky is observed because of the relay scattering and explanation about the blue color of the sky is can be done by Rayleigh, Rayleigh's law of scattering. So this type of scattering simply produces separation of wavelengths originally present in the incident light. Okay, remember in this type of scattering or in coherent scattering, the scattering simply produces the separation of wavelengths originally present in the incident light. Okay, so just it does the dispersion due to this scattering, okay? It will not create the wavelength other than the incident light. If incident light is composite, if it is white color, then it will contain all the wavelengths or a certain range of wavelength in it. So lower wavelength light are scattered more, higher wavelength light are scattered less. So change in direction is observed to be more for lower wavelength light. That's why it simply produces the separation of wavelength. Low wavelength light will be scattered more, higher wavelength light will be scattered less. So that is observed in relay scattering. The scattered light has the same wavelength as that of the incident light. So you cannot observe wavelength other than incident light. Therefore, relay scattering is coherent scattering. Okay, it is the example for coherent scattering. Then let us take the another example for coherent scattering that is Tyndall scattering. So basically Tyndall scattering is also called as Tyndall effect. It is the scattering of beam of light by the medium containing small suspended particles. Okay, so relay scattering is observed. A good example is observation in the atmosphere, whereas the Tyndall effect is scattering of beam of light by medium containing small suspended particles. So it is observed in suspended medium, okay. Example is scattering of light by smoke or dust in a room, okay. 
suppose a beam of light is passed in a uh, smoke okay then you can observe the elimination of light in all directions okay that is due to the scattering uh, of light because of the smoke particles or if you have the large just particles in a room then also you can observe the elimination of light in entire room okay if you pass the beam of light through the dust particles as in relay scattering short wavelength blue light is scattered more strongly than long wavelength red light okay in a tyndall effect also relay's law is applicable short wavelength blue light will be scattered more compared to the long wavelength red light so longer wavelength light are scattered less however relay scattering occurs from particles much smaller than the wavelength of light whereas the tyndall effect occurs from the particles roughly the same size as that of the wavelength of light so in relay scattering the size of the particle is very much smaller compared to the wavelength of light so if you take the visible range the visible range has the wavelength from 300 nanometer to uh, 700 nanometer if you convert that into micrometer it is of the order of 0.3 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer in relay scattering the size of the particle is very much smaller compared to the wavelength of light but a tyndall effect is observed because of the scattering from particles whose size is almost same as wavelength of light so basically you remember tyndall effect is observed because of the scattering of light by micrometer sized particles okay micrometer sized particles gives rise to tyndall effect very small particles gives rise to relay scattering that is the difference between relay scattering and tyndall scattering you remember this the medium which is going to give the scattering decides whether it is a relay scattering or tyndall scattering and also this tyndall scattering is coherent scattering here also the wavelength of scattered light is the same as the wavelength of incident light next we'll move towards the incoherent scattering example very good example is raman effect and basically this raman effect is discovered by c v raman who is a indian scientist and who won the nobel prize for discovery of this raman effect while studying the scattering of light c v raman found that when a beam of monochromatic light when it is passed through organic liquids such as benzene toluene etc the scattered light contained other frequencies in addition to that of the incident light this is called as raman effect okay so in raman effect what happens the scattered light contains some other wavelength or some other frequency light compared to the incident frequency light okay so new frequency new wavelength of the light is created there because of the scattering effect so that is called as incoherent scattering and in raman effect the monochromatic light when it is passed through organic liquids such as benzene toluene etc the scattered light contains the other frequencies in addition to that of the incident light frequency this is called as raman effect so basically raman effect is defined as the phenomena of incoherent scattering of light by molecules which makes the scattered light to contain discrete frequencies above and below that of the incident light okay so incident light has certain frequency after the scattering you can observe the scattered light to be containing the frequencies other than incident light okay incident light frequency nu irthu with that you can observe some other frequency lines also and these other frequency lines are observed to be discrete they are not continuous you can observe the spectral lines in the scattered light okay and that is the phenomena called as raman effect the displacement of modified spectral lines from the exciting line 
when measured in wave numbers depends only on the scattering substance so it is observed that the scattered light contains number of spectral lines which depends only on the scattering substance and is independent of the wave number of exciting radiation exciting radiation means it is incident radiation whatever may be the incident light the spectral lines in this scattered light depends on the scattering substance only it means that the scattered light is going to give the characteristic spectrum of the substance it doesn't depend on the incident light it only depends on the medium which is going to give the scattering that is very important point you can note here the spectral lines in the scattered light are depending only on the scattering substance that means the scattered light is a characteristic property of the substance that means it can give you the property of the substance that means if you study the raman spectra otherwise the scattered light due to the substance if you study that definitely you can find out the properties of that substance that is very very important phenomena so that is the reason why this raman effect is going to be very very important study that is in spectroscopy which can give rise to the properties of the substance and till today this raman effect is used to study the characteristic of the substance because it gives you the entire property of the substance that is needed uh, we have to study only the scattered light that's all that's all the raman spectrum is the characteristic spectrum of a scattering substance that's why it gives you complete property of the substance raman effect is quite different from relay scattering okay how it is different in relay scattering you cannot get the frequency of light other than incident light in raman effect you can observe the frequency of light other than incident light in relay scattering or coherent scattering there is no change in wavelength because of the scattering but in raman scattering the scattered light contains light of different wavelengths compared to incident wavelength for this reason a raman effect is incoherent scattering so because of the scattering the wavelength of light changes that is called as incoherent scattering that's why raman effect is incoherent scattering in which the wavelength of light changes when the scattering takes place so experimental study will discuss in the next video